Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. My name is Volker Mühlhaus and today I'm going to show you an automated workflow to take touchstone files for spiral inductors, which can be two port or three port as parameters and automatically create a physical wideband equivalent circuit model. And this is not a mathematical fit, it's really a physical model where every single element makes physical sense like resistors, capacitors, and inductors. Okay, let's get started. The software is implemented as an ADS design kit. So it's installed like all other ADS design kits. And once installed, you have a menu item, which is inductor model fit in the ADS main menu. The first step is to choose the input file. In our example, it's an S2P file. And the software analyzes the file and gives you an overview what the data is. So we see the inductance of this spiral. We see the differential Q factor, series resistance. And now here on the bottom right, we set our frequency of interest, our operating frequency. And the reason for setting this is that the model will have the highest quality, oh, that the model will use this frequency to have extra high fitting quality at this frequency of interest. It's a wideband fit, but this has some extra weight to be extra precise at this frequency of interest. Okay, we are going for 5.6 gigahertz, and that's it. This dialog stores this frequency in the, in the background. We can close it and proceed to the second step. Step two is start circuit model fit. This will bring up the ADS optimization cockpit as the dialog tells us. So there is a schematic which in the background has been created. Good starting values have been set, which are completely automatically calculated from the touchstone file. So it's not always the same starting values. It's of course, good meaningful starting values for this S parameter file. So here you can see what is optimized. It's an equivalent circuit model. It's the touchstone set. It's a bunch of parameters, a bunch of optimization goals, which are all set according to the contents of your touchstone file. And optimization is started automatically and has now reached 50 iterations, which is the limit that is preset. We see the error has become very, very small. So we can close this update design and our equivalent circuit model fit is finished. It just takes a second to get the data. And now we see a dialog, sorry, we see a data display which compares the original touchstone file inductance in red, called measured here, and the model curve, which is the blue. So they are exactly on top of each other. So it's a really good fit for inductance. Here we see the Q factor, almost exact match, very, very subtle difference here. So a very high quality fit. Here's the effective series resistance. You can see a very, very good fit. Same for the shunt capacitance to the substrate. And also the shunt resistance to the substrate has an excellent fit. Okay, so we have a good fit. And that's nice to know, but what are the element parameters and how to use that in your workflow? Here, an equation in the background writes a touch, sorry, writes a um, spectra schemat, spectra. <laughs> this writes a spectra netlist, an SCS file. So in the data directory where you had your S2P input file, an SCS file for use with 
cadence spectra is created, which has the equivalent circuit model inside. Maybe you also want to use this broadband model fit in ADS. In this case, step three, create cell in library, creates for you this example two. Example two was the name of the S2P file. Example two, S2P. Now we use that name, example two, and get a schematic, which is the touchstone file itself. And we have a schematic lump model, which is our fit. Here you see the fit parameters, oxide capacitance, substrate capacitance, etc., etc. And behind this is this equivalent circuit model. For center tapped inductors, the workflow is exactly the same. The difference is that, of course, for center tapped inductors, there's a more complex equivalent circuit. Yeah, and that's it basically. So in the file view, we see the data directory. Here we had our S2P file. It does not need to be in the data directory. We have browsed with the file browser. So any any location for the touchstone file is fine. And here is the SCS file. So this is the spectra netlist from this equivalent circuit model fit. That's it. Thanks very much for your attention and enjoy this tool. The license is free, so just get started now. Thank you.